Hello, and welcome to Theology with an English Accent. My name is David, and we are now on episode 14. In the last episode, we read about Paul's attitude about forgetting what was past and pushing on towards the, the goal of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let's look at the text today, which is now at the very end of chapter 3. Brethren, join in imitating me, and mark those who so live as you have an example in us. For many, of whom I have often told you, and now tell you even with tears, live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and they glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our commonwealth is in heaven, and from it we await a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body, by the power which enables him even to subject all things to himself. So Paul begins this section with a theme with which we should be well familiar, imitation. Here he invites the Philippians to imitate him and imitate those who live like him. Again, you'll sometimes say, hear people say that you know, we should only imitate Jesus. And there's certainly some truth to that, but again and again in Paul's letters, he invites people to imitate him and imitate those who live in the way that he does. In, in Catholicism, we have like a hall of fame uh, of Christians who have led exemplary lives for us to imitate. And all of these lives have been very different from each other. Some have been married, some have been rich, some have been poor, some have been educated, some not. But all of these different people give us a path to follow that show us what living like Jesus looks like in their state of life, in their geographic area, in their profession. We call them saints, this time with a capital S. Paul goes on. For many, of whom I have often told you, and now tell you even with tears, live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and they glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. So very briefly, here Paul describes the enemies of the faith. And he describes them in fairly broad terms. He says, their God is the belly, which indicates a kind of gluttonous attitude. He says, they glory in their shame, that when they sin, it's something that they're proud of and want to share with other people. He says they're enemies of the cross of Christ, that there is something about Jesus' self-sacrifice that they are thoroughly opposed to, that they have their minds set on earthly things. But ultimately he points out they're not going to win. Their end is destruction. But I now want to move on to the last couple of verses of this section because I think that these are, these are really important. But our commonwealth is in heaven. And from it we await a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body, by the power which enables him to subject all things to himself. So in the opening phrase, Paul says, our commonwealth is in heaven. And the Greek word for that is polituma, which could equally be rendered citizenship. So Paul says, our commonwealth, our citizenship is in heaven. Now, if you think back to the very beginning of this video series, I spent quite a bit of time talking about how Philippi was a Roman colony. It was full of people who were very proud of their Roman citizenship. We actually read about this in Acts of the Apostles. But Philippi was full of people who were Roman citizens and very proud of that fact. It influenced the way they spoke, the way they dressed, the way they deported themselves. It had an impact on every area of their lives because they were tremendously proud of that citizenship and would defend it. But here, when Paul says our polituma is in heaven, our commonwealth is in heaven, our citizenship is in heaven, he's pointing them to an even better citizenship, an even better commonwealth. Not the kingdom of Caesar, not the Roman Empire, but the kingdom of heaven. And just in the same way, that if you were in a Roman colony, you're, you were not only proud of your Roman citizenship, you, it influenced your life greatly. Paul would expect the fact that since our citizenship is in heaven, 
We should be tremendously proud of that. And that should influence the way we live, the way we carry ourselves. If you read the writings of the early church fathers, so the Christian leaders following the apostles, you find this, uh, this idea appearing again and again. And I think the best example of this is the epistle to Diognetus. Here's my favorite section. Christians are not distinguished from the rest of mankind by either country, speech, or customs. The fact is, they nowhere settle in cities of their own. They reside in their respective countries, but only as aliens. They take part in everything as citizens and put up with everything as foreigners. Every foreign land is their home, and every home a foreign land. They spend their days on earth, but hold a citizenship in heaven. Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, let's return to Philippians. Paul refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you're a Christian, you hear this all the time. And we sometimes grow a little dull to it. But particularly considering he's just been talking about citizenship and commonwealth, the fact that he calls Jesus Lord, Kyrios, is incredibly significant. Because in the polituma of Rome, in the commonwealth and the citizenship of Rome, there was one Lord, and it was Caesar. So here Paul is saying, no, our commonwealth is in heaven, and from it we await a saviour. <coughs> Sorry. And but Paul is saying, our commonwealth is in heaven, and from it we await a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was for the lordship of Jesus that most of the early Christian martyrs went to their death, because they proclaimed that Jesus was Lord, to the exclusion of Caesar. And now we come to today's question and challenge. The challenge is simple. I just invite you to memorize verse 20 of Philippians. But our commonwealth is in heaven, and from it we await a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And for the question, do you regard this world as your home? Or do you regard heaven as your home? Do you see yourself just passing through, not quite yet at your final destination? In the next episode, we will begin chapter 4. And until then, in the words of Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen, God love you. Thank you.